Good evening, Berlin, and thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, I feel very privileged to be a friend of Free Iran. On International Women's Day, we, make the new, we mark the unique contribution made by our sisters around the world to the cause of women's rights. More than 100 years after a woman suffragette from my own country threw herself under the king's horse in an act of civil disobedience against social injustice, subsequently dying of horrific injuries, women in many countries have still not achieved equality of opportunity. In fact, in some countries, the world seems to be going backwards with oppressive regimes bringing in archaic laws, denying women and girls freedoms they thought they had won, meeting out ever more violence against women and girls, both physical and psychological, using religious fundamentalism as a perverse rationale for keeping us in our place. According to the United Nations Index on Gender Equality, published in December 2014, Iran ranks 109th out of 149 countries. This is a shameful state of affairs, especially considering that Iran is one of the most ancient civilizations of the world, with a high number of female graduates and eminent women scholars who are now subject to restrictions about how they dress, the things they say, the way they move about the country, and who they associate with. As a member of the Women's Rights and Gender Equality Committee in the European Parliament, I fight for equal rights of women wherever they are, and for the eradication of gender-based violence, which continues to be a stain on society. Since becoming acquainted with the NCRI Women's Committee, I have been privileged to learn about the pivotal role of women in the struggle to bring about a fair and free Iran, led by Maryam Rajavi. Thank you. Led by women, but working alongside fair-minded men for the benefit of all citizens, for an Iran that would respect difference and cultural diversity whilst promoting women's equality, encouraging them to take their rightful place in society, to live a life free from fear, and to have the rights of free association enjoyed by so many other women around the world. In a ridiculous case last year, a young Anglo-Iranian woman was arrested, imprisoned, and tried simply for attending a volleyball match. What kind of system punishes young women simply for being sports spectators? The case of Ganesh captured the imagination of people around the world, and a mass petition of nearly 750,000 signatures was delivered to the UN. Ganesh was released. However, many other Iranian women have not been so lucky, losing their lives or liberty, being attacked, raped, maimed, disfigured by acid, put under house arrest, intimidated, silenced, and for what reason? For defying the re regime's imposition of draconian laws, for speaking out against their oppressors, and in some cases naming them, for daring to be public at all in some cases. The tragic case of Rehani Jabari, who refused to acquiesce in the trumped-up charges against her last year following the death of a government agent whom she had stabbed in an act of self-defense as he tried to rape her, will stand as one of the most iconic moments in the global women's movement. Many of us participated in the campaign for her release, and whilst we achieved a, te a temporary stay of execution, the price of freedom was too high for Rehane. And what was that price? Simply, the truth. Jabari went to her death with a clear conscience, display displaying the dignity and strength of character that so many women throughout history have shown. She will never be forgotten, for we shall continue the fight 
for a fair and free Iran in her memory. As well as being on the Women's Committee, I'm also a member of the Culture and Education Committee in the Parliament. And as a poet and theatre maker myself, I am passionate about the role of arts and culture in a civilised society. Whilst learning about Camp Ashraf last year, I was pleased to see that the inhabitants had led a full creative and cultural life, with a women's orchestra and sports activities playing an important role in the day-to-day -day timetable. But without my ongoing friendship with the NCRI Women's Committee, I would not know these things. The world's media is tongue-tied, in the thrall of governments rather than the people. And this is especially so in the respect of oppressive regimes such as the current Iranian administration. According to Reporters Without Borders, Iran has become the world's leading jailer of female journalists and netizens under Rouhani, with at least 65 journalists and news providers behind bars, and is now one of the world's most oppressive countries as regards freedom of information. But we are here to tell the truth and to shine a light in dark places. Today, I stand in solidarity with the NCRI women, past, present and future. I stand in solidarity with Mrs. Mariam Rajavi and also with Shole, the mother of Rehane Jabari, and all the mothers who have experienced the pain of losing the daughter at the hands of murderous thugs condemned condoned by a corrupt state. They died innocent of any crime except that of being honest and true, clever and bright, women full of life. Thank you.